Hi, my name is Florian, you're on the Productivity Exchange, and today we'll be looking at Jira Search. The first thing to remember is that every work item in Jira is called an issue. The easiest way to search Jira is to click into the search box here. That will show you your most recently viewed issues, as well as your most recent boards, projects, and filters. You can then start typing the name of a particular item that you're after, and you can see that a list appears here. You can then click on any of these here to open them up as well. Now, in order to get that list back, I would need to come up here and type RL again, and then find the particular issue that I'm after. The other way I can generate a list is to just hit enter. That will then put me into the search mode here. Notice, however, that it's not actually returning anything. So what you'll need to do for it to match anything else on the end of the uh, character name is to put the wildcard character asterisk in, the little star, and that just matches to any characters at all. So if I put that in and click search, I will get all items that start with RL. Now, we find ourselves here in the advanced issue search. You can also get here by just clicking search and advanced issue search, and it will open a blank version of what we just saw. The other way to get here is to click filter and advanced issue search. So there are three ways to get here. Either you click filter, advanced issue search, search, advanced issue search, or you start your search in here, RL and then asterisk, and hit enter, and then that will already start a search for you here. Regardless of the way you get here, this is the advanced issue search in Jira. I'll just make it the blank version so that we can talk through everything from scratch. Now, when you open up advanced issue search, it will open up every issue from every project. This can take a little bit of time to load and can be quite slow depending on how many projects and issues you have in your Jira instance. But there is a workaround that I can show you at the end of the video. The other thing to note here is that it has defaulted us onto the details view. So you get a list of issues down the side and then you can see the detail for whichever issue is selected. And you can fully interact with these as well. You can toggle this view to a list though by coming up here and clicking on this icon and then selecting list view. You can then toggle back by coming up here again. Just notice that the icon has changed. At the moment it's showing us that it's a list. Whereas if we go to a detail view, it will show us the list down the side with the details pane here. The list view will have a default set of columns across here. This will depend on whether you're using the Atlassian defaults or whether your admin has set up something for you already. You can change the columns that you see though by clicking columns and then searching for the relevant columns that you want to see. So in this case, say I want to add description. I just click tick and then done. I can also untick particular ones and I can search for those particular items by just uh, typing the name and then ticking or unticking that particular status. So I've now removed labels and I've now set this up the way I want to see my search results. Now that we've done that, let's do our first search. By default, you will see this view here. You can select what project you want to see. You can also select what issue type you would like, what status the item should be in, and who the assignees should be. You also have the option of more, and you can find any field on any of the issues and then filter by them. This is particularly useful for the updated field because then we can also say we want to look at all items, say within the last day. So I can see all of the items that are updated in the last day. There are other options to make it either more than X amount of minutes ago or between a particular set of dates or in a particular range. So if you want to say, see all items between one week and three weeks ago, uh, you would do it like this. W is week, D is day, H is hour, and M is minute. I'll stick within the last one day for now though. I will update this and I can see that there's just one issue that got updated in the last day. Now say I regularly want to check this filter. I don't want to have to manually set this up every time I go in. Jira provides us with a way to save these filters. I can just click save as and then type a name for this filter. So I can say updated last day. 
There we go. And I submit that. And I can see that it has put a little title up here and it also has added a little details thing here. If I click on that, I can see that this is owned by me, that the permissions are set to currently only be visible to me, and I can edit the permissions. We'll get to the subscriptions bit in a moment. First, let's edit the permissions so that anybody in the organization can view this filter. If I click edit permissions, I can also change the name of the filter here, and then I can set it to either be visible to anybody in a particular project, or I can set it to be a particular user group if those have been set up, or anybody in my organization. Just remember to hit add before you hit save, because if you do not click add, it doesn't update here, and if you then try and share it with somebody, they will just get a 404. So I'll hit save and I've updated it. So I can now see that any logged in user is visible. The other cool thing that I get is subscriptions. If I click on subscription, I can select either a personal subscription or I can send it to particular user groups. I will leave it on personal subscription for now and I can have it email me either daily uh, or on certain days of the week at particular time or in particular intervals or on particular days of the month or in some more advanced interval. This will then email me a list of all of the items that are returned by this particular filter. If there are no issues returned by the filter on a particular day or at a particular time, it will skip that email unless you tick this, in which case it will send you an email and say that there were no issues found. Once you click subscribe, you will receive your regular email updates. Once you've saved your filters, you can come up here to filters and you can see that it's already put it into our starred list as updated last day. It automatically does that. You can unstar it from here and you can restar it from here or you can un and restar it over here. If you then click on this filter, it will load the items that are available and to share it with other people, you can then copy and paste this link into an email or a chat. You can also go to view all filters to see all the filters that are available to you. So these aren't just your filters that you'll see here, but also those shared by others within your organization. If you have access to them, they will appear here. So if you have granted somebody access, they can search for a particular filter. So if you tell them that your filter is called updated last day, they can go to filters, view all filters, and then search for updated last day and find it here. They can then star it and it should appear in their starred list, or they can just click on it and it will open that filter. One thing to note about the starred filters is that they will appear in the order in which they were starred. So at the moment we have test search and then updated last day. If I unstar test search, I can see that I've just got updated last day. And if I star that again and then refresh that, I can see that it's just gone updated last day and then test search is underneath that. So depending on the order in which they were starred is uh, the order in which they will appear here. All right, and now to the trick. So advanced issue search will always be quite slow because it's loading everything from every project. If you're finding that that's an inordinate amount of time, what you can do is you can save yourself a little filter that just returns one or two issues. So in my case, what I might do is I might just save myself current user and then save that as something like quick search. And then whenever I come into the uh, advanced issue search, instead of clicking here, what I can do is I can click on quick search and it will open significantly faster. You could also just click any of these other searches, but it'll depend on how many items they return, uh, how fast they are. But just bear in mind that if you make changes and you accidentally hit save rather than save as, so in this case, say I filter it further, if I click save now, that would overwrite that particular filter. I would need to go save as. So it's always good to have a little dummy filter in the background that you use for these sorts of things rather than any of these ones that you rely on day to day. What we've covered is how to use the search field up here, how to use the advanced search, then how to save filters for ourselves, how to share those filters with people and make subscriptions. And we've also covered how to change it between the details view and the list view. I personally find the list view quite useful, particularly because I can change the number of columns that I see across here by simply clicking on the drop down and then finding the columns that I want to see and ticking or unticking them accordingly. And that essentially covers everything for filters and advanced issue search. The only thing that we haven't touched on yet is switch to JQL. JQL is Jira query language, and it is a code version of searching 
through Jira. This gives you a little bit more flexibility than the basic search does here, but you should be able to do most of the things that you need with the basic search. I will cover JQL in a future video. However, the next video will be on dashboards, how to make and share them, and how to avoid some of the common pitfalls. If you found this video useful, please consider liking and sharing this with somebody. And to stay in the loop for future videos, make sure that you are subscribed and hit the little bell icon. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.